Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and once again, as we continue with the tribute to Robin Williams, I'm reviewing my third film that's based on the book by Chris Van Osberg, yeah. and this was one of his best-selling children's books from 1981 called Jumanji, which is from 1995. It stars, once again, Robin Williams with Kirsty Dunst, who went on to do films like Interview with the Vampire, and Small Soldiers, Bring It On, and, and many others. Yeah, Drop Dead Gorgeous, too. Yeah. And she's a great actress. Yeah. Along with Bradley Pierce, who has been known as the voice of Chip from Beauty and the Beast, went on to do films like the Bowers and Doom Runners. Yeah, those were good ones. Bonnie Hunt, who actually got her start in films like Rain Man, as well as the first two Beethoven movies, and many others. Yeah, David Allen Greer from It Live in Color, and the movie <coughs> Mannequin, and many others he's been in. You know, one of the funniest comedians. The Bay Newworth from Cheers and many films. Jonathan Hyde from Richie Rich and The Mummy and Patricia Clarkson. And it's directed by Joe Johnson who uh, directed the movie Honey I Shrunk the Kids as well as The Rocketeer, Captain America, The First Avenger. Yeah, as well as the Page Master, and many others. He was also the art director, such as Raiders of the Lost Ark. And he also won for that. The movie began set outside of the woods of Brantford, New Hampshire, in 1869. The two boys had buried a mysterious chest, which produced the sound of tribal beating drums. A hundred years later. 12-year-old Alan Parrish, who had fleed from a group of bullies to a local shoe factory known as the Parrish Shoe Factory that's owned by his father, Sam, who's played by Jonathan Hyde, where he actually meets one of Sam's employees named Carl Bentley, played by David Alan Greer, who actually showed Alan his futuristic shoe, which basically looks almost like an, a shoe that was produced by Nike, or in some cases Reeboks, I wants up in Alan's hands until he accidentally put the shoe inside the machine, which causes a lot of damage, and Kyle had taken the blame and the responsibility, which caused him to lose his job. But outside of the factory, the bullies wanted up beating up Alan and stole his bike, and after that, Alan had followed the sound of the same drum beats that he heard the same way that the two boys have heard inside the construction site where he found a chest containing the board game called Jumanji which he finally took home and then after an argument with his father about attending at boarding school he, he decided to run away with his friend Sarah Whitler who actually arrived and brought his stolen bike back and they began to play the game Jumanji when the dice had rolled, the, some of the player's pieces had moved by itself with the cryptic message appearing inside the crystal ball. And right in the center, the, Alan's first message is what tells him how to spend time until all of a sudden, that is until the dice had rolled from 5 to 8, and he got sucked inside the board. And 26 years later, the siblings known as Judy and Peter Shepard had moved in to the same house that Parrish once up in with their aunt Nora, and both played by Kirsten Dunst and Bradley Pierce along with Bebe Newworth. At, they both had lost their parents in a car accident, both were named Jim and Martha. And once again they started hearing the drum beats and they, and they wanted to play the game in the attic. And all of a sudden, a lot of things were going extremely wrong, such as mosquitoes, monkeys, and even a lion. And that's when 
Alan Parrish had finally arrived, now an adult, and he's played by Robin Williams. Yeah, already being, already filled with a grown beard and, and loads of hair. And he now finally now discovered Judy and Peter about what's going on in the game. So after all this, you know, Alan had locked the, the lion in the bedroom and heads to his father's factory. You know, but he did also meet Carl, who is now working as a police officer in a now already shut down factory. Uh, a homeless man actually had revealed that, that Sam was distraught after his appearance and has been abandoned for business for years. Also the fact that that they soon had lost his parents as, as years followed. So then in order for him to f finally finish this game before a lot of havoc had started, including the big stampede and all this other stuff, all three of them had tried to find Sarah who has been devastated after Alan's disappearance. They persuade her to finish the game before something bad really happens, including the hunter that came along who happens to be a resemblance to his father, and so on and so forth, and the whole thing became a, a huge mess inside the entire city. So they're trying to stop him from, from stealing the game and, and trying to get uh, all the games in one piece before they have to keep playing until... Uh, yeah, another disaster starts to happen. Yeah, even with the house and, and other animals, you know. It's like one of the biggest jungles <laughs> that really appeared inside uh, or outside of the, the entire world. <laughs> so with the help of them, they need, they had to find a way to finish the game without, before a lot of things have gone extremely wrong. And it's a very good film that's based on the book, and I used to read the book too, a long time ago when I was little. Like, I think I was like five or six when I read this, because I was in elementary school. It's a very good book, and if, if you love to see what, what was it like, you know, playing a game that wants up coming back to life, it's like, wow, it, it was really pumping, edge of your seat type of fantasy adventure that you ever saw it was amazing it, it was actually which was also interesting too because they had a lot of great special effects all all CGI with animatronics and all this you know it's funny I don't think it looked as dated as it seems I mean this is like I mean the 90s really had a lot of good techniques at the time because already Jurassic Park was one of the biggest films of the decade, and so was uh, Terminator 2, because they both had some interesting CGI effects that they put into this movie. It may look a little cheesy as far as the effects are concerned, I mean, especially the monkeys, because the monkeys look pretty, you know, rather cheesy by making their face, with their facial movements going around and yeah they look very creepy too and all the animals too including the the lion yeah they you could tell that they really did use a lot of CGI in all these scenes and all these, so it was and plus it was so uh, smashing it was very loud too at times yeah cause, uh, especially with that stampede with the rhinos and and the elephants the zebras the pelicans every single animal that they have from the jungle in the wild kingdom it was everywhere it was like wow you would have expected to see something like this about to happen and it's just I mean just for that one game alone <laughs> yeah. but yeah Robin Williams did a very good job playing Alan Parrish in the film I think this was definitely right up there with his other roles that he's done this was his second film that he actually wants to in a fantasy adventure after Hook which came out in 1991. In the same studio, by the way, TriStar Pictures. So, <laughs> yeah. That releases both of these. And also, Bonnie Hunt uh, from Beethoven and Rain Man. You know, he, she was also very good, too, you know, playing the adult version of herself that they both played. You know. So they seemed like, yeah, they, they had very good chemistry together. And Kirsten Dunst, though, you know, she was very young at the time, too. She was like, I believe she was like 13 when she did this movie, or actually 12 years old. 
Yeah, 12 years old. Yeah, she was very young at the time. And yeah, she was already doing films like you know, Little Woman and Interview with the Vampire. And yeah, she was very good in this movie, too. It was pretty cute. And she could definitely act very well. And it's hard to believe that this is the same actress who went on to do films like Bring It On, you know, the cheerleading movie, you know, which I also like, too, with the, the Drop Dead Gorgeous and Small Soldiers, too. That was a good one. Everything. Yeah, oh, and of course, Spider-Man. Yeah, who couldn't forget that? Because she played Mary Jane Watson. Yeah, in the first three films. Bradley Pierce, you know, who, who has always been known as the voice of Chip in, uh, the t in the movie Beauty and the Beast. Of course, he also did the voice of Tails in the TV series Sonic the Hedgehog. And also went on to do films like The Bowers and Doom Runners. Yeah, I love those films too. Those are my favorites. Yeah, very good in this movie. Well, David Allen Greer, you know, as usual, always doing his comedic stuff. Yeah, he did a good job, you know, just playing, you know, a former employee once of becoming a cop who, <laughs> I know, who his car has always been damaged all the time. Yeah, where, yeah, where the monkeys took over his car, you know, they, they keep driving and slamming into it and crash into it and all of a sudden, you know, it always gets, you know, you know, then the hunter keeps shooting it and then later, you know, the plant pod actually ate it. <laughs> there were times when I actually did joke on that one scene with the plant pod, which I, I know, which is sort of like a resemblance to, you know, Little Shop of Horrors, where I said, Baby Seymour, after, after Perry got caught in, <laughs> in um, the pod, got caught in the pod, and, and all those other scenes that went into it. Yeah, it, it's a really good film. I mean, you should definitely check this out. Especially if you love the book, Jumanji, you definitely would watch this. And even after the movie, they even had a board game as well that's based on it, too. And even a video game. So it's always interesting that they had a lot of stuff from the film. They also had a TV series later on that aired on UPN. It was an animated series, and I thought it was really cool, too. It only lasted three seasons as the show went along and quite different from the movie and the book and they also had um, another sequel which is also based on the book called Sephira or Sephira a space adventure which came out in 2005 by John Farrow yeah the, the movie with Josh Hutcherson yeah with uh, Kristen Stewart yeah of course from a from Twilight Ugh. But she was also in the movie Panic Room, so I always remember her from that. And uh, Dax Shepard, too. Which um, actually became, which didn't do so well at the box office when that film came out. Because it was going up against films like Chicken Little and Harry Potter. But Chicken Little was a shitty movie, but, but Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire was actually very good. That was the first film that gave it a PG-13 rating. So on and so forth. But, yeah. It's definitely a jungle out there, and if you must take a chance to see this. <laughs> yeah. But but it did become a hit um, when it came out in 1995. It was during the Christmas season, so it, it worked pretty well. Because there were a lot of movies that came out during December, even though some of them were, were huge flops. But nevertheless, because it made $65 million, so that went pretty well for the production values that they went into it with all the special effects and all the techniques and all this other stuff they put into it with all the sets it was amazing and it was really blasting it was a, with excitement I, I just really enjoyed this movie a lot so definitely watch this it's, it's fun so I give Jumanji five stars I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.